We made a Bitcoin ATM and uh, we wanted to convert meat based coins to Bitcoins. Uh, but let me first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Robert Mulder. I see myself as a thinker and an entrepreneur. Um, I study creative technology and yeah, one of my passions is combi uh, connecting uh, the human with the machine. And well, the Bitcoin ATM was a perfect mix of that. Um, what I won't be telling today, I won't be glorifying or vilifying the Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency for that matter, and I won't be talking about the aesthetics of the machine. Uh, what will I be telling uh, is why we made it, how we made it, and we will give a short demo. Uh, but first, the Bitcoin. Um, I always like, before a presentation, I like to search what I'm actually presenting about. Um, so I took the Oxford Dictionary uh, definition of money, which says it's a current medium uh, of exchange in the form of coins and banknotes. I was like, okay, that, that's not really the Bitcoin, since you, we, we don't have really coins and we don't really have banknotes, because it's not physical. Um, then I looked at what currencies, and it's a system of money, which is still something that would actually represent something physical uh, in a general use in a particular country. Um, I thought this was more suitable for the Bitcoin, although you have to see money as something digital instead of something physical for the matter. Um, and a particular country, oh yeah, country, um, it's not really for one country, it's for the biggest country in the world, the internet. Um, so why is it interesting for the internet? Well, it, it has three big advantages uh, which made it the, 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 as big as it is today, uh, which are it's, anonym, uh, it's very anonymous, um, and this is, in my opinion, where Bitcoin really uh, grew, or at least had, had its biggest growth, uh, was on the Silk Road market, where illegal goods were traded for an anonymous uh, coin, so the government did not have any control over where the money came from or where it went. Um, it's decentralized, so uh, we saw a peak in the Bitcoin rise uh, when the Bank of Cyprus fell over. Uh, it's decentralized, so there's no government controlling it, so the, it's the power to the people. And um, like I said, there's no government control, so when WikiLeaks wanted to have uh, wanted to receive donations, uh, the government said, well, Visa and PayPal, and nobody was allowed to uh, let money be transferred to WikiLeaks. And therefore, the Bitcoin would be a perfect way to uh, keep this going. And they actually switched to Bitcoin for donations right now. Um, so our Bitcoin fortune, everybody asks us, well, th did we get rich? Well, no. <laughs> Uh, we had approximately two bitcoins, and well, it, it was a factor uh, 10 from our investment. Uh, one part we converted to silver, and another part we built the bitcoin ATM, and uh, we put some money on there so people could buy some bitcoins from us. Uh, but sadly, we were not driving a Ferrari yet, or uh, live in a big mansion. So maybe that's for the future. Um, where did the ID come from? Well. On Hackaday, we came across the Bitcoin suitcase, uh, which was developed by Team 269 on a DEFCON, coin, DEFCON conference uh, last year. Uh, but it was really obscure. It was a suitcase and it was really something for nerds. Uh, you threw in money and a private key will be printed, which you can uh, then upload to your wallet again, and the Bitcoins will be received. But for uh, between brackets, normal person. This is really way too obscure. There's no really a link with the, something they can relate to the physical world. And if you're not familiar with Bitcoin, you won't get any more familiar with it through this means. So, we so wanted. It was really a black box. It was really a yeah. black box, and you threw in money, you mm -hmm. saw how much Bitcoin you would receive, and then it printed out the, your private key, which you had to uh, enter into your wallet. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted for the user to have the interaction with something they knew. We wanted to make it look like something they were al already familiar with. And most of all we wanted to tell people a story about the cryptocurrency so it had to be something that just was an eye catcher. That's why you made a big orange machine. Um, 
Then we had to find out, okay, what components would we, uh, were we going to use? Um, soon we found the Münzprüfer, uh, which is a coin money checker. Uh, it's practically in any uh, gambling machine or uh, yeah, candy machine or whatever. Um, it's by a German maker, so it's quite decent. And uh, it could be easily uh, read out because it, it uh, I will get into the details later, by the way. Um, an Arduino, our electronic glue to combine all the components together. Uh, a Raspberry Pi, the brains, and this is actually not completely true, this is for version 2. Uh, this version still runs on a laptop running processing. Um, and some miscellaneous uh, components like a screen, buttons, a webcam, and a casing. Okay, building the machine. So we made a little photo uh, series of how we build it. Well, oh, it's a bit dark, I see. Well, this is the basic setup. It's the wood plates put together. And we put wheels underneath of it because it's like really, really heavy. Um, well, this is somebody screwing together. The, there is a door on the back side to have an easy entrance to the electronics. So it has a back door. It, it, it has a back door. We thought about putting a little Chinese person in there who would be accepting the coins, but <laughs> we managed to automate it. Uh, this was some concept art we wanted to put on the side. Sadly, we didn't get to that part yet. Um, we wanted to attract people to use the machine, so we thought a nice woman with a Bitcoin head would be uh, really nice. <laughs> Uh, well, this is Maurice who is putting in the screen. This is me coding late. <laughs> um, this is the money funnel thing um, with the money entrance plate. The uh, money why the, checker. Why the, why the old school TV? By the way? Uh, we used an old school TV because we wanted to have a, a, a really look like a physical object and make it as innocent as possible. So no touch screens, no fancy stuff, just old TV, simple representation and nothing more to it. And the next version will have a touch screen and stuff. But this, this was our first idea. It uh, was actually we tried to build it for a, a art technique festival in Enschede. Um, we did not manage to get it finished in time, so we built it for a mini maker fair uh, about a month later. But that was the basic idea. Um, well, this is, was the money checker and where it was inserted. This is inside the machine. And this is what it looked like at the end of the day. And it, right now it has a bit more color to it. All right, the interface. Um, well, it's quite easy actually. Uh, we use three Arduinos. Uh, the bottom Arduino uh, is not there yet. It's the <coughs> node acceptor unit. The upper two are there, uh, are implemented right now. Uh, there's an Arduino uh, linked to the coin acceptor. Um, it just gives a simple serial interface to it so we can use it uh, on a computer. Um, same for the buttons and the LEDs behind the buttons. So there's a sensor and an actuator there. And the node unit will be uh, about the same as the uh, coin acceptance thing, but then only for the nodes. So it's all connected to this, uh, with, uh, through the serial connection, uh, which is connected to the application. Uh, in this case, it's running processing. Uh, for those of you not familiar with it, you can go to processing.org and find all the details about it. Um, it's a nice Java library, which is really easy to uh, get something official. Do you have a question? Yes, uh, why do you need three Arduinos? Why don't you use one? Is it, is it not possible? Um, <laughs> that's a funny story. It, it is possible to put it all in one Arduino. The point is, I wrote the uh, program for the coin receiving Arduino on one night. Then I totally forgot where I saved the code, so I could not find it back again, and then I had to <laughs> quickly implement the buttons and the LEDs, so I was like, okay, okay, I have some more Arduinos laying around, let's take another one and throw that one in. So how about the Note Arduino then? 
Um, that might be implemented on the button Arduino, but maybe it's just an extra component. I don't know. For the next version, it will all be implemented with one microcontroller to keep it really easy. Right. Um, but for now, it, it was really just the alpha prototype, so I didn't really care about the <laughs> yeah. that part. Um, the application has the uh, well, actually, two special uh, connections. That's a serial connection and the webcam connection. Uh, the webcam is used to read the uh, QR code with the Bitcoin address uh, for receiving the address. Um, and the serial connection is for reading out which coins were inserted and uh, checking if the button was pressed and if the LED should be enabled or disabled. Um, and of course the application is linked to the user which will be uh, yeah, using the machine. And a user needs to have a phone wallet or at least a QR code of its wallet uh, to be able to scan it in. Can, can it also be a printed paper wallet? It can be a printed paper wallet. We had people who uh, made a screen, uh, made a photo with their phone of the uh, computer screen with a QR code on it, and even that worked. Um, as long as, as it's a QR code, it will be fine. Okay. Cool. And the detection is actually quite good. Uh, any questions about this? Yeah. Um, how is it possible that it can scan a paper? Because it's pretty dark in that box. And I would expect that it, uh, the picture would be very dark. Um, yeah, probably right now there's not enough um, enough light. But if you turn on the light there and you hold it in front of it, it will be nice. Um, it, it's not a really cheap webcam. I think if we would have chosen a cheaper one, in, indeed, it wouldn't have worked. Uh, right. But right now, it, it, yeah, it's quite alright. I, I so, so for, for, the, for your next one, if you just add a little button that puts fires some LEDs, oh, put yeah, a paper wallet next to it, and then people can hold their paper wallet and load their oh, paper the, wallet. Oh, that would be great indeed. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've been thinking about um, moving it from a phone wallet to something else because. Uh, Apple apparently doesn't like the Bitcoin very much, uh, whether it be that they are building their own payment system or that they just disagree about the Bitcoin, we don't know. Um, but there are not really any proper iPhone apps. They don't like it because uh, they don't want uh, apps to allow in-app payments without using the uh, iPhone. Uh, oh yeah, because then they can't store. get cash over it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we we're looking for yeah, a solution the, for the that. The problem is Steve Jobs <laughs> didn't invent it, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, or at least he cannot claim it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might also be part of the problem. So we're working on something else. Uh, maybe it will be something with like a card with a, a random QR code on it, or it can print uh, a label where you can get your coins or a, a link to an address. We don't know that uh, exactly yet. Um, we have been looking with PikaPay, uh, that's a Twitter. Uh, payment system 